Hey, have you ever wondered how long you can survive in a game of zombies if you never touch your controller? Well, neither have I, but in this video, you are about to find out. I went through every single Treyarch Zombies map just to answer this question. Alright, so before I forget, let me give you the like and dislike goal. Let's go for, I don't know, 400 likes and 15 dislikes? If we could do that, then that will be well appreciated. So here's how this video is going to work. It's just as the title suggests. I'll go into a game on every zombies map, and once the game starts, I cannot touch my controller. And I'm going to see how long I can survive. If I had to guess, I'd say you're probably thinking that there is some kind of way to advance through the game without touching your controller, since the thumbnail shows round 100. That's just clickbait. You know, I've been a real bad boy, I understand, so let's make the dislike goal be 20 dislikes instead of 15. Anyways, I'll take all those times and compare them on every map, then list them from the shortest to longest survival time. Now that sounds very simple, right? Well, there's a lot more to this nonsense than what meets the eye. There are tons of regulations I must make before I can even consider proceeding through this video. I need to make this data as accurate as I possibly can. First of all, I need to make sure I have a sufficient sample size. Doing one sample on every map would be very quick and easy, but there's way too much variability with that. So to be statistically valid, I decided I would do 30 samples on every map then I'll average all those times. Now you might be asking, why 30? You probably think that's an unnecessarily high amount of samples because I spent over 28 hours getting all the gameplay for this video. Just watching myself die over and over and over again hoping that one day it would all be worth it. Was it worth it? No, it definitely wasn't worth it to make this video. But having accurate numbers is way too important. And just in case you're interested, I've got a Google Sheets document right in the description below that gives all the data for every single sample I did of killing myself over and over again, and every single time that I got. So now is the part of the video where I will explain exactly how I did this process. I know most of you just want to see the times, and if that's you, Great, just skip to this point in the video. If you are interested in how I did this whole process, go ahead and stick around. And just in case I go too far into detail for your liking, I'll just keep this time down here if you change your mind about sticking around. And okay, if you haven't skipped yet, then congratulations, you're still here and you're probably going to regret it. So here we go. First and foremost, we have to have a way to collect these times. I want to be as precise as possible, so I decided to collect each time to the exact frame. All these zombies games run at 60 frames per second. Just for those of you who are new to this video game terminology of what a frame per second is, it's basically the amount of still images that appear every second. So since this game runs at 60 frames per second, there are 60 still images for every second. So if I try to use a stopwatch to start and stop the time, I would only have about 1 60th of a second to start and stop for it to be the perfect frame. And to me, that is just not accurate enough for my liking. So I had to have a different way to do this, a reliable way to do this. So what I had to do is I had to record every single death, and then I made a file in Adobe Premiere so that I have free access to each and every frame. There we go. Now we can start crunching down these numbers. But wait, there's more to this. To get these times, we need to have a defined start point and end point. So what do we define as a start point? And this is going to be the criteria I'm using for this entire video. I believe the start point should be the exact moment the player becomes active in the game, meaning the very moment you're able to move your character. Well, that does seem a little bit tricky considering the fact that the whole point of this video is not to touch your controller, which means you can't move to get this reference point while still having our time count. But I found a way to find a starting point. However, the process to finding the starting point in every map differs by game. So first, I will start with World at War, more specifically, Nocturne Toten. I will say I had to touch my controller to move my character, but I did this in a separate game unrelated to the ones I'm collecting data on. So here's what I did. I held down my left trigger at the very beginning of the game, so that at the exact frame the player is active, the pistol will start to zoom in. But then wait, if you can't touch your controller, then you can't do this, making this absolutely useless. Well yes, that is right, but what is something that will occur on screen as a second reference? That's right, the crosshairs. According to this gameplay on Nocturne and Toten, 
the player becomes active the very moment the crosshairs appear on screen. And that's what I thought for a very, very long time as I was making this video. But actually, that isn't the exact frame that the player becomes active. Because zooming in, this is not when the player first becomes active. When you move your right stick, the player becomes active before you're able to zoom in and before you can even see the crosshairs. But this all happens before the screen's even visible. So it seems like there's no way to see the exact frame where the character starts to move. Which is basically right, but I do have a way to get close. I will start a game and wait for the screen to become visible. Make sure I'm on the lowest sensitivity to make this as easy as possible. Then I'll make sure to turn to the right as smoothly as possible. Then I had to do this again, but at the very start of the game, before the screen is even first visible, and see what exact location the crosshairs appear. Then I had to refer back to the first time I did this and compare the same location and how long it took me to get to that location. And ultimately, I ended up getting a time of 1 second and 29 frames, or 29 sixtieths of a second, which may not be completely accurate, but it's accurate enough. This means that the start time will be this amount of time before the crosshairs appear. Wait, 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 hold up, H hold up. This is so pointless. The time is going to change if you move your right stick. You could have just moved your right stick every time and the results wouldn't have changed at all. The time you wasted doing all these calculations was so unnecessary. You know what, Dave? You are exactly right, but I've gotta keep the theme of this video consistent. Me touching the controller for any reason would defeat the entire purpose of this video. That would kinda be like, you know, clickbait. And you all know, I do not clickbait. Anyways, just for the sake of consistency, I need to see if this holds for the other maps too. And it does. Okay, now that we've got that settled, let's go look at how we find the endpoint. So you all know that it takes two hits to down in World at War. So this should be easy, right? Well, it becomes a lot of a judgment call. It's actually very difficult to determine the exact frame of death trying to look for the second hit. I don't want any of this to come down to judgment calls, so I found a way. Whenever you go down, notice how your points start to decrease. I found that the exact frame that these points decrease is the frame where you die, and I like to call this the frame of lost points. So just look at the frame of lost points, and that's where we have the end time. And there we have it. We've got our defined start and end points, so now we can finally get into this video. But that's just for World at War. Things are a little bit different for each of the other games, and I'll try to run through them as fast as I can, but it's still gonna take a while for me to explain these. Remember, there's this time down here. If you don't like this, just skip to the actual part of the video. I'm warning you again. You're still here? Okay, let's just move on. Let's look at Black Ops 1 next. On Black Ops 1, the game does not allow the player to move until a few moments after the screen is already visible, which makes things much easier. However, the crosshairs are also visible too before the player is active, so there goes our reference point. What are we going to do? I had to think of something else. But here's what I decided. What I decided to do is use a little round 1 animation to my advantage. We will look for when this round 1 stops on the bottom left corner. The reason I'm using this method is because it is very easy to detect when the one is officially stopped. So now what I do is I see the difference in time between my player becoming active and this one hitting the corner. And this time comes out to be about 6 seconds and 56 frames for Kino, with some very, very minor differences for all the other maps. So basically what this means is once the one is officially stopped in the corner, I count the time this amount of time before it, and that's my start time. This method may not give us the most accurate result, but gives us one that we know is only maybe a few frames off. And this all holds true except for two maps, and that is Ascension and Moon. We'll look at Ascension first, okay? So first of all with Ascension, when you first spawn into the map, the lander adds about 8 seconds and 35 frames to the total time. And yes, we do count that lander part, because you are technically active while on the lander. And then after this lander animation is done, then the round 1 starts to show up. So overall, the start time is about 15 seconds and 31 frames before the 1 hits the corner. But now we go to Moon. When you spawn into Moon, there is no 1 to reference. 
but there's something very strange that happens on Moon that actually happens on all the DLC maps, which I didn't even notice until I got to Moon. I am talking about the HUD. So basically what the HUD is, is it shows you stuff like the ammo count, how many grenades you have, just that kind of stuff. Alright, but basically here's where I'm going with this. It is not immediately visible. And then a few frames after, it finally just suddenly appears. And it actually appears before the player is even active. So doing my little calculations, I find that the player becomes active about a second and 16 frames after the HUD shows up. So now we have all the start times for Black Ops 1. And then for the end point, it is the exact same thing as World at War. We end the time on the frame of lost points. Alright, so I'm so surprised that you guys are even still here. But let's now get on to Black Ops 2. The Black Ops 2 maps seem to be the easiest to find the starting point for. Much, much easier than Black Ops 1. This is because this round 1 that's right here appears suddenly without fading in so we have a concrete reference point to work with. To make things even easier, I've discovered that your player becomes active about 4 frames before this appears. And the end point is just a frame of lost points, right? Just like all the other games. Well, that's at least what I thought. But if you look very closely, you can see that the player is officially dead about 3 frames before the frame of lost points. Anyways, that is Black Ops 2. Except, there is one map in this game that defies all of these regulations set into place, and that is Mob of the Dead. Mob of the Dead is definitely the weirdest one in this entire video. This is because you are in afterlife when you first spawn into the map. And remember, there is absolutely no exception to the no touching your controller rule. Therefore, I cannot revive my character and I must remain in afterlife. It was very hard to come up with a starting point, but after many attempts of trying, I settled on it being about 50 frames before the afterlife symbol appears. As for the end point, you have zero points when you're in afterlife, but when you go out of afterlife or die, you gain your points back. So with that, the end point will be the frame of gained points. Okay, I'm almost done with this. If you're still here, you may as well just stay to the end because there's not very much left. But now on to Black Ops 3. There's really nothing too special or different about Black Ops 3 when calculating these times. One thing that makes things very convenient is that this lion right here for the gobblegum shows up instantly instead of fading in, so we have an easy reference point. However, the player becomes active before the screen is visible, which is a pain. But all we have to do is use the spin method we use in World at War to get the proper start time. And I got that time to be 3 seconds and 10 frames before the line shows up. And then the end point is simply just the frame of lost points for all the maps. Lastly, we're on to Black Ops 4. This one is very different from all the other games, because instead of having quick revive to buy for extra lives, you already have extra lives to begin with. So you have 3 times to down before the game is even over. Some might argue that hey, this is not fair, but all I'm doing is calculating when the game starts to when the game ends, because that's the criteria I set out for this video. But just for funsies, I also did calculate how long it would take for the player's first down too, but it won't count toward the official score. Anyways, with that being said, let's look at the start point. In this game as well, the player becomes active before the screen is visible. <sighs> Great, but here is something interesting. This is actually the only game where the player is able to aim before they're able to turn. If you hold down the aim button before the game starts, it appears as if the player is already completely aimed in before the screen is visible, and that is actually not the case. When the screen starts barely fading in, you can see that the weapon is barely finishing its aim. This is just enough for us to work with. We will see how long it takes for the weapon to complete its aim from there, then compare that to another aim from start to finish. Using that time of a full aim and the time here of finishing the aim, we can subtract this time from the time where the screen is just visible to when the weapon is fully aimed. Overall, we get that the player is active about 4 frames before the screen is even visible. I know gauging when the screen becomes visible can be a bit of a judgement call, but in Black Ops 4, I feel like it's quite easy to differentiate between visible and not visible. So that will be the start point, and now for the end point. 
the health bar makes things extremely easy to find this endpoint. For the first down, just look for when the health bar reaches 1, or when the screen becomes very bloody. But things are a bit different for the last down. It's actually really simple. On the exact frame the player dies, the weapon in their hands just suddenly vanishes. So that will be the exact point that we will end the time. Wow, that was a lot to explain. But with that, let's get into the ranking. In the last place spot of number 26 and having the shortest survival time, we have Moon with an average time of about 22 seconds to death. This is far and beyond the map you'll die the fastest on if you don't touch your controller. This is because you are spawning right in the middle of this area where zombies spawn out of the ground right beside you. Even the slowest time at about 29 seconds is extremely fast compared to the other maps. And the fastest time on this map is 15 seconds which is insanely fast, so if you just spawn into the map, you better act quick or else you're just going to be dead. At number 25, the second fastest map to death is Zetsubo no Shima with an average survival time of about 29 seconds. And just something I want to add is that 9 from Black Ops 4 would have been in this spot if we were just counting the first downs, because it had an average survival time of about 28 seconds. Anyways, Zetsubo is a bit of a strange map, because if you look at this time distribution, it is very spread out. Its fastest times are almost as fast as in Moon, with the very fastest being about 18 seconds, but the slowest is about 53 seconds, which is slower than many of the other slowest times coming up. And you can see this huge gap here too, which is very, very strange. There's three of them all the way out to the right, and the rest of them are just over here. But this is all due to one zombie spawn area on this map, and that is the water behind the player. If zombies are spawning in the water, the time to death will be very quick. But in the occasion that no zombie spawns here, it will take quite a while for them to get to you. But that is Zetsubo no Shima without touching your controller. Now at number 24, we have Die Rise with an average survival time of about 34 seconds. The results while averaging longer than Zetsubo no Shima seem to also be a lot more consistent. There wasn't just one spawn point skewing the results like in Zetsubo. However, whenever zombies spawned from these top areas, things did seem to go a bit faster since the zombies didn't have to worry about breaking down barriers. I mean, the fastest time on this map was 20 seconds, which is pretty fast, almost as fast as Zetsubo no Shima and Moon. But it did seem quite rare for times to be that fast on this map though. But there is Die Rise at number 24. In the number 23 spot, for the longest survival time, we've got Revelations at an average of about 37 seconds. This is the spot Blood of the Dead would have been if we were considering the first downs on Black Ops 4. But overall, this map had a very even distribution between its short and long times. If zombies weren't spawning in the barrier behind you or near where the door is, the times did tend to be a lot shorter, but if not, the survival times would drag out a little bit longer. Alright, number 22, we've got Shadows of Evil with an average survival time of 38 seconds. The spawn room for Shadows of Evil is very tight, so zombies will be able to reach you quickly from multiple different spawn points. However, it's this spawn right here that makes for the shortest survival times. If zombies don't spawn from here, the survival time will see a bit of an increase, but not really by too much. The 21st longest surviving map without touching your controller is Nuketown, which barely beat out Shadows of Evil by just 6 frames. We had a shorter fastest time than Shadows of Evil at about 23 seconds and a longer long time of about 56 seconds, so a lot more variability with Nuketown. But one thing about Nuketown is that there's absolutely no barriers for zombies to break down to get into this map, so that actually does make things a lot quicker. At number 20, we have Origins with an average survival time of about 40 and a half seconds, and this is where Voyage of Despair would have been on this list if we were counting first downs, but again, we are not counting first downs. Haha! -ha. But anyways, since this is Black Ops 2, there's multiple spawns for the player and these spawns did have some impact on the times. You could tell that there are some spawn points where you can survive longer than others. And this is evident with the shortest time being about 27 seconds in this spot, and the longest time being about 56 seconds at this spot. But yeah, that's Origins. At number 19, beating out Origins in survival time by one frame, just one frame, we have Transit. At first glance, you would think that Transit would be the shortest death time since there's zombies literally right next to you when you spawn. 
but those zombies are EMPs, so they won't move if you don't move. So it's a little bit deceiving. So basically, we ignore those zombies in terms of having anything to do with this experiment. There are two barriers in this room where zombies come in really fast, and two where the zombies come in kind of slow. The time of each sample depends a ton on where the game initially spawns you. If you're spawned by these quick spawn areas, the time will be much faster than if you're spawned on the other side of the room. But that is transit. In the number 18 spot on this list, we've got Garod Kroll V with an average survival time of about 42 seconds. But the shortest survival time I got after 30 trials is about 29 seconds, and the longest survival time I got was about 55 seconds. I find that the fastest times to death usually come from this spawn back over by the fountain. If they don't spawn here, there are other spawn places where they can still get to you somewhat quick. At number 17, we have Kino der Toten. I love like Kino! And Kino has an average survival time of about 44 and a half seconds. And this is actually where Dead of the Night and Classified both would have been if we were counting first downs. What's really interesting is that Dead of the Night was just one frame ahead of Classified, just like how Transit was one frame ahead of Origins. And that is really the last of Black Ops 4 for first downs. So you can see that zombies spawn in very quickly on Black Ops 4, but since you have those self revives, it really skews their survival times to be much longer. But anyways, back to Kino. There's not really anything too special about Kino when it comes to this experiment. There's not really one specific zombie spawn that gets to you faster than the others. The times mostly depend on the spread of zombies in each location. The more zombies in one area, the quicker they'll be able to break down the barriers to get to you. In the number 16 spot on this list for the longest survival time, we've got Call of the Dead with an average survival time of about 45 seconds. I must say, this has to be the most consistent result of survival times I've gotten this whole entire time, until we get to one map later on. By looking at the times, there's only a 10 second difference between the shortest and longest times. And this is all due to Mr. George Romero. He has already spawned into the map at the same location every single time. The only reason there's even any mild variability at all is because for some reason, Mr. Jorgen here sometimes has a lot of trouble killing you. Another thing is that if one zombie that spawns from the ground gets to you while George is trying to kill you, it speeds up the process. At number 15, we have the Reichsendrach at about 46 seconds of survival time. As it turns out, this is the map you can survive the longest in on Black Ops 3 without touching your controller. So the Reichsendrach, my favorite map of Black Ops 3, congratulations. If I ever want to not use my controller and survive the longest, you're the map I'm going to. But again, we're not counting any of the remaster maps, so maybe that's not the case. But just for the new maps, Dreisendrach is the winner. In Dreisendrach, you're kind of spread out from where all the other zombie spawns are. Therefore, even though the starting room is kind of small, the zombies still have a bit of time before they can get to you. Coming in at number 14, we have Shangri-La with an average survival time of just under 49 seconds. The shortest time on this map was just over 38 seconds, and throughout my 30 repetitions on this map, there was only one time where I survived over a minute. And this is actually the first time on this entire list so far that this has happened. So Shangri-La, congratulations, you've done it. At number 13, we have Buried at just under 53 seconds. And this was another very, very interesting map. I found that most of the times on this map completely depends on where the game spawns you. There is a spawn where the zombies take a very long time to get to you, and then there's a spawn where the zombies get to you very quickly. You see the shortest survival time right here is about 38 seconds, while the longest survival time is about a minute and 9 seconds. With such limited space in the starting room, one would think that zombies would get to you and kill you much quicker, but actually, no. There's some zombie spawns down here where they actually kind of take a while to get to you. Now on to number 12, the 12th longest surviving map without touching your controller. This is 5 at about 55 seconds. The main thing with 5 is that you're spawned right in the center of the starting room, which means it'll take longer for the zombies to get to you no matter where they are coming from. The only way to get a fast-ish time is if there's a large concentration of zombies coming from one barrier, because then the zombies will be able to break through the glass faster, getting into the map sooner, and then killing you faster. But yes, that is 5 at number 12 on this list. In the number 11 spot, we have finally got our first World at War map, and that is Shinonuma, my personal favorite map of all time. I must say that in World at War, 
zombies take much longer to get to the starting room than in any other game because they spawn so far away. And looking at this histogram right here, there are some very strange results. Looking at the first half, there's nothing too out of the ordinary, but then there's these glaring outliers of survival times all the way over here to the right. This is very strange, but there's a reason for this. These results happen because there are two sides of the room. On each side, there are two barriers for the zombies to spawn in. However, the game spawns you on this side very close to these two barriers and far away from the other two. So this means if all the zombies spawn on the other side of the room, the survival time will greatly increase. There are four zombies that spawn in on round one in World at War. And since there are two out of four options for zombies to spawn on the other side, there's a 50% chance that a given zombie will spawn on that side. So using that same logic for the other three zombies, we get that there's a 1 in 16 chance for all four of the zombies to spawn on the other side of the room. But this happening is how I got a survival time of over a minute and 25 seconds, which is way higher than any other time I've seen so far, and much higher than any time you might even see for a lot of this list. Alright, finally, we're in the top 10. This is so exciting! But number 10 is Doris, barely edging out Shinonuma with an average survival time of about 59 seconds. In Doris, you can tell that the zombies do spawn into the map much faster than Shinonuma, but it's because you're spawned right in the center of a somewhat large room, they're able to survive longer than Shinonuma. Also, you're on top of this staircase too, right next to Pack Punch, so zombies coming from the side have to climb up this thing just to get to you, which takes a lot of extra time. At the number 9 spot, we have our third World at War map in a row, which is Verukt, with an average survival time of exactly 1 minute. The longest survival time was about a minute and 16 seconds, with the shortest being about 48 seconds. Now one thing you have to remember about Verukt is that there are two completely different spawn rooms. There's the Quick Revive one and the Jug one. And for all fairness purposes, I did 15 of each. But there is a clear difference in the results from these rooms. You'll most likely survive longer in the jug room with an average survival time of about a minute and three seconds, where in the quick revive room, you can only survive for about 57 seconds. These are both very small starting rooms, but just like with basically all of World at War, zombies spawn very far away from the spawn room, allowing for a longer survival time. In the number 8 spot, the last map we have for Black Ops 2, the winner of Black Ops 2, is Mob of the Dead with an average survival time of about a minute and 6 seconds. This is a very, very weird map to do these calculations on because you don't even spawn into the map as a human player. In this map, you will die without ever seeing a single zombie. One would think that since there's absolutely no outer influence like random zombie spawns, the time would be the exact same, and that's what I thought too. I mean, you just spawn into the map and wait for the afterlife to run out. I mean, what type of randomness or variability can happen this way? Although the times are very close together, they are not the same according to my calculations. Now again, maybe there is something faulty with my method, of finding these times, but I couldn't find a way to prove that, so if you really care enough, you can go by yourself and find a better way to do this. I don't really care. But with all that side, this is by far the least variability I had in any results. The longest survival time I got was about a minute and 7 seconds, and the shortest time I got was about a minute and 4 seconds. Although 3 seconds is a very small range, it is a big difference with something that seems like it should be the same every single time. Another thing that is extremely weird is this distribution I got. I really can't explain how this happened in any way, but there's a massive left skew. Most of the times are closest to the longest survival time, and there's very few toward the shortest. And yeah, that is Mob of the Dead. Very, very strange results. You know, I would actually be very interested to see what the times would be if I actually revived myself and let my players spawn into the map and let the zombies eat me. What if there was no such thing as afterlife on this map? How would this change things overall? Without any experimentation at all, I would predict that it would be about 38 seconds on average because of the extremely tight starting room. I really don't feel like trying this, so I will not try this. Come on, Clay, do it for the viewers. <sighs> You're right. You're right. Fine. I will do this. Two hours later. <sighs> I really gotta get a life. So, after I tortured myself for even longer for absolutely no reason, 
I mean, seriously, I just thought to do this while I was finishing up this script, and I completely regret it, but it turns out my prediction was way wrong. The average survival time for this map is about 54 seconds. This would have ranked at 13th just above Buried, and below 5 if we were to count this. In the number 7 spot, we've got our last Black Ops 1 map on this entire list, and this is Ascension. So congratulations Ascension, you are the winner for Black Ops 1. And Ascension has an average survival time of 1 minute and 7 seconds. One thing I've got to mention, just in case you skip my entire whole explanation, which I really don't blame you because that would be torture if you had to listen to me all that time, is that I do include this whole spawning into the map sequence of being on the lander. So I did do the proper calculations for if you didn't count the lander part, and that would be about 58 seconds, which would place it at number 10 between Dereese and Verrucht. Since this is Ascension, we get to start in black and white. Yay! First, let's look at the distribution of the times, shall we? Okay, looks to be a pretty normal distribution. Let's just zoom out a bit. Whoa! Wait, that can't be right. I made some kind of mistake. A minute and 31 seconds? There's no way when I compare that to all the other times. That, that can't be right. That is by far the most glaring outlier I've seen in this entire video. If we took out this one time, the average survival time would be nearly a second shorter. But after looking at the gameplay, it does make sense. On Ascension, there is this thing in the spawn room called the Centrifuge. At random times, it'll turn on for a few seconds killing any zombies who go through it. You know exactly where I'm going with this. The centrifuge killed the zombies that were getting close to me, meaning that the zombies further away from me that would typically never reach me in time would have to finish the job. Knowing this, it is theoretically possible to end a round of ascension without touching your controller. It would take some extreme RNG though. The zombies would likely have to spawn in the exact same area so that there's no spread of how long it takes for the zombies to come in whatsoever, and then you'd have to get lucky enough for the centrifuge to go off at the right timing if it even goes off at all. Even then, I don't even know. This is all hypothetical. There are probably some variables I don't know about that I haven't taken into account, kind of like how some zombies may spawn seconds apart instead of at the same time. But hey, if one of you guys could get in a game where you complete a round without touching your controller, I will definitely give you a shout out. And hey, just cause it's so impressive, I would even give you a $50 PlayStation or Xbox card, whichever you choose. The rule is you must record the full gameplay from beginning to end, no using mod tools or hacks. If you decide to waste your life and record a clip of you accomplishing this feat, send to me by email at claystarproduction or upload it to YouTube and send me a link either through email or my Twitter at theclaystar. You know, I just want to shout myself out a little bit so you guys follow me on Twitter at theclaystar. That's why it's still on the screen and I haven't removed it. But anyways, yes, I will give one of you a $50 PlayStation card or Xbox card. Wait, what? Am I actually doing a giveaway all of a sudden? I don't do giveaways! First the clickbait and now this? There might be something wrong with me. I mean, it's not like any of you are actually going to try this. And if you do, good luck probably won't be worth the amount of time you spend. Something that's probably impossible for something worth $50? That's right, I'm cheap. I really gotta stop going off these tangents on my scripts and just go on with the list, okay? So I'm moving on. And now for the last World at War map, the number six longest surviving map without touching a controller is Nocturne and Toten with an average survival time of about a minute and 13 seconds. And if you've used Process of Elimination, the five current existing Black Ops 4 maps as of the day of this video are the top five on this list. So if it wasn't for Black Ops 4, this would have been the single map you could survive the longest without touching your controller. The longest time of this map was a minute 28 seconds and the shortest time was about 55 seconds. So ironic how the longest surviving map pre-Black Ops 4 is the first created map because you can tell that initially the goal of zombies was just to defend the fort, which is why they had zombies spawning so far away from the spawn. Since this is World at War, there's four zombies that spawn to the map on round one. I found that the more zombies that spawn and break down this barrier right here, the quicker you would die. But if they didn't spawn from there, the time of survival would be much longer. That's Nocturne and Toe in all the pre Black Ops 4 maps, but now onto Black Ops 4. Alright, so number 5. First of all, I know that you all know now that the top 5 is all Black Ops 4 maps and it wasn't even close. With that being said, the map you die the quickest in without touching your controller in Black Ops 4 
is 9. And this was actually the only map that was somewhat close to Nocturne and Toten with an average survival time of about a minute and 17 seconds. The shortest time was about a minute 8 seconds, while the longest time was about a minute 27 seconds, which to my surprise, is actually faster than Nocturne and Toten's slowest time. So basically, the three downs on this map before Nocturne and Toten's one down. On 9, you spawn in this little tunnel kind of separate from where all the zombies spawn, except the zombies spawn almost instantaneously and they're running quite quick on round 1. I mean, geez, it's just round 1. Look how fast these guys are running. This even explains how 9 would have been placed in the second to last spot on this list if we we're just considering the first down. And even with taking 4 hits to down. But yeah, that is 9 for you at number 5. At the number 4 spot, we've got Voyage of Despair with an average survival time of about a minute and 28 seconds, which is a huge difference from 9 and the rest of the other maps. This is where we truly start to see the separation between BO4 and the rest of the Zombies maps. I mean seriously, the average survival time on this map is longer than the longest survival time on 9, and then the longest survival time on this map is a minute and 43 seconds. Overall, the data on this map was pretty consistent and there really isn't too much else to say. And when I down, there are some times where a zombie will stay right on top of me just waiting for me to get back up, and then there's other times where the zombies just walk away. So maybe if it wasn't for the zombie being right on top of me, I probably could have survived a lot longer. At number 3 now, we have Blood of the Dead with an average survival time of 1 minute and 29 seconds, with the longest survival time being a minute 40 seconds and the shortest being a minute 21 seconds. Something that's very interesting is that this is the only Black Ops 4 map where both the shortest and longest survival times matched with the same game I got the longest and shortest first downs. You see right here I put the green as the shortest and the red as the longest? Yeah, it matches up. Which is pretty cool. With a much more condensed starting area than Voyage of Despair, you would think that Voyage of Despair would have a longer survival time than Blood of the Dead. Well, I guess not. And there's even zombie barriers right next to you too. I think that maybe this is due to the fact that the zombie will stay right on top of you on Voyage of Despair sometimes, which I never ever saw on Blood of the Dead. Because every time you down on Blood of the Dead, zombies just go away from you. But yeah, the Blood of the Dead, number three. In the number 2 spot on this list, we have classified with an average survival time of 1 minute and 35 seconds. The longest time of survival is a minute 42 seconds, and the shortest is a minute 27 seconds. As you all know, this starting room is nearly identical to that of 5. If you compare the first downs of this map to that of 5, you can see that there's a huge difference in survival times. How could this be when the starting rooms are so similar? Well, I think it's just the nature of Black Ops 4 that zombies will spawn into the map sooner due to their ability to walk faster. And finally, the number one spot on this list is the newest map as the day of this video is uploaded. And let me just say, this was not even close. This is Dead of the Night with an average survival time of 1 minute and 44 seconds, with a longest survival time of 1 minute 51 seconds, which is far beyond any other longest time in any other map. The shortest time of survival is actually a minute 35 seconds, which is just a few frames longer than the average survival time of the second place finisher classified. Fun fact about this map, I have never played this map outside of getting the data for this video, so I really don't know anything about this map except for just how long it takes you to die without touching your controller. But anyways, back to the top get hand. In this map, we have a feature not seen since Verukt in World at War, where you have two different spawn rooms you can spawn in. In Verukt, it turned out that there is one room that allows the player to spawn a bit longer than the other with about a 6 second difference. But after 15 samples of this map, I only got a difference of barely over a minute, so I determined that this isn't a significant enough difference to say that one side allows you to survive longer than the other. Alright, now let's see what allows you to survive so long on this map without touching a controller. Like, what's so special about this map? When you look at the first down average, nothing seems too out of the ordinary. Sure, it is one of the longer surviving times on BO4, but it is nearly the exact same as classified. But the big separation comes in after you down. Once a zombie downs you and you go into the last stand, the zombies will climb over this ledge away from you. I mean, all the zombies decide to jump over this ledge. When they go over the ledge away from you, they do it with such ease. But once they come back to you, they struggle to get back. And it seriously takes them about a good 13 seconds just to get over this ledge again. And that's basically how Dead of the Night is the single map you can survive the longest in without touching your controller. So, there you have it. Probably the most pointless video you've ever watched on the internet. Maybe even the biggest waste of time you've experienced. Well, if that's all true, 
I'm honored to take that title. I spent at least over 80 combined hours total on this video from things like getting the gameplay, documenting the data, scripting, editing. Now seeing this whole video, you understand why I haven't been uploading. Some of you thought I quit. Some of you thought I was dead. But no, this is what I've been doing. I've been making this video for you guys. And was this worth it? Probably not. Well, unless it gets over a million views, which it won't because it wasn't that good of a video, then, you know, maybe it would be worth it. And then you might ask, why did you do this? What was the whole point of doing this video? And my answer, I don't know. I guess I just got kind of bored. It was in the mood to waste my time for no reason. But I must say, now that's all said and done, and I finished making the video, it feels oddly satisfying. I mean, if you want more videos like this, I mean, hey, Put it in the comments, and I'll be down to make more content like this. And maybe you want me to go over the remastered maps or the non trek maps. If it's in high enough demand, I'll surely do it. Anyways, now's the time to plug all my social media and force you guys to follow me on every single one of them. First of all, subscribe to my YouTube channel right down below for more pointless content like this. Then next, follow me on Twitter, at the Claystar if you want to interact with me or see some of my tweets. I've actually been more active there as of recent, so... It might be worth checking out. And then also, if you want to see a stream that you've missed, go to Claystar Streams. I know, I haven't been streaming for a long time, but I've got something very special planned in the near future. Coming soon on DVD. So don't you children worry. And then follow me on Twitch at Claystar, Claystar with two R's. I might stream there as well, maybe do YouTube and Twitch at the same time if I can, when I do this super special stream. I don't know, you just gotta wait and see. Make sure you follow me there so you'll know. All of that is linked in the description below, including the Google Doc of all the data in case you want to see that. And then lastly, put those notifications on to be notified whenever I upload a video or do a stream. And remember, we're going for 400 likes to potentially have a sequel to this, and then 20 dislikes because I clickbaited. But anyways, with that, I'll see you in the next video!